We're talking about Aoyama, a boy who has an almost irrational fear of dirtiness. This has turned him into a complete clean freak. Whatever you do, don't touch him or pass him something that isn't already his, or you'll be dodged and then ignored without reservation. Now, cleaning isn't the only thing Aoyama is good at. He's also part of the Japanese under-16 youth team. In fact, after getting cornered on the world stage, Aoyama himself scores a goal and leads his team to victory. Calling him a good player is an understatement. He's a mutant prodigy. Though, of course, even when his teammates jump over him and try to celebrate, he gracefully dodges them all and makes sure to follow the COVID regulations. Though, other than being part of the youth team, Aoyama goes to a totally normal and ordinary school called Fujimi High School. He barely ever talks to anyone, but even a stranger can see that he enjoys celebrity status at his school. Whenever he sees something unclean, he instantly gets his insane urge to clean it, and so other students sometimes also gather around him to experience his graceful antics. Girls go without saying, but even boys can't help but be enthralled by Aoyama's presence. It's still tough though, since as hard as Aoyama tries to keep everything clean, he can only do so much as a football player. He'll inevitably get dirty, or even worse, he may one day get touched by another player. Luckily for him, his teammates are all basically his fans, with one exception though, and that's the filthy rich Keiaru Zaizen. He thinks Aoyama is too far gone, but their coach named Miwa, who also just so happens to be a pleasant beauty in her own right, explains that Aoyama has more than enough skills to make up for any disadvantages that he may have during the game. Later at night, when Keoto is on his way to the club room, he witnesses a sketchy girl trying to break into the boys' club room. She flees after noticing him, but when Keoto looks through the club window, he sees Aoyama thoroughly scrubbing all of the footballs clean. So much so that they don't just look good as new, they look even better than when they were new. Coach Miwa also shows up and tells him that Aoyama does this every single time. The following day, the captain of the Oshigami Minami High School team shows up at their school. His name is Akira Takechi, and he was part of the under-16 youth team as well. And not to mention, he's also a pretty big fan of Aoyama and wants him on his team instead. Aoyama says thank you, but no thank you. He doesn't want to leave Fujimi High School for some reason. This kind of exchange goes on for a while until finally Takechi decides to challenge them all to a game. He wants to make Aoyama realize just how much his current team sucks. The match begins, and sure enough, Takenshi's team scores a goal before you know it. And then he's smug enough to flex his abs in front of Aoyama. But Aoyama remains undaunted. The moment he gets the ball, he beautifully scores two goals without ever having to touch another player. Everyone's taken aback. It was a magical spectacle. During halftime, Aoyama faces more difficulty than before because everyone is all over him, while Takechi continues to flex his abs as his team decides to change things up a notch. The second half begins, and sure enough, they knew what to do. Several players latch onto Aoyama to restrict his movement, while those who are left own the stage. Unfortunately, the other players on Aoyama's team really do suck. Even Kaoru's no good. He misses a shot even when it's just him and the keeper, but he had the nerve to criticize Aoyama's habits. Soon enough, it starts raining and the ground gets all muddy. Takechi's team is already one goal ahead, but Aoyama simply doesn't want to move, or he'll get his perfectly clean shoes dirty. There are only five minutes left, the opponents are in the lead, and he doesn't want to get himself all dirty. But even so, Aoyama knows that there's something he hates more than dirtiness, and that's losing. Just like that, he pushes through the dirtiness and scores a goal, and then scores another one, and leads his team to victory. Everyone's suddenly all sunshine and rainbows as they all run towards Aoyama to celebrate, but it'll take a miracle for them to catch him. Now, remember the girl who was trying to break into the club room? Well, her name is Mocha Goto, and she has a crush on Aoyama ever since he talked to her back in elementary school. That moment changed her life and turned her into a stalker. She continues to peek into the room whenever Aoyama is cleaning and even sneaks in when he's not around. One time when the team enters the club room, they find the room all clean and shiny, but that's normal. However, even their clothes are all perfectly cleaned and folded. Wonder if Aoyama did it, but he didn't. In his words, he'd rather die than touch someone else's clothes. And this wasn't just a one-time thing. It continues to happen again and again and again for an entire week. The boys eventually rationalize that it's a fairy who's been cleaning and folding their clothes. But the next time, Aoyama catches someone in the act. It's that girl named Mocha Goto. She's been the one cleaning every single aspect of the club room, including their clothes and stuff. Much to her surprise, he asks her if she needs help and then goes on to recommend an exclusive cleaning agent. And with that said, guys, this video is sponsored by... <laughs> just 
kidding, that would be absolutely ridiculous. After he recommends the cleaning agent, he also calls her by her name. This hits her in the sweet spot. She had no idea that someone as iconic as Ayama would even remember a side character like her. Tears start flowing out of her eyes. Just then, everyone else also shows up at the club room. They're not very pleased to see Ayama alone with a girl, but change their tune when they realize that the one who's been cleaning their clothes and stuff is a girl. The captain invites her to be their club manager, and of course, she passionately accepts. Things have been fine so far, nothing weird about a female stalker, but not for long. The next day, the boys are in the club room while Aoyama is taking a shower. One of them is daring enough to take a whiff of Aoyama's towel, but the smell was so overwhelmingly pleasant that he continues to bury his nose in the towel and experiences some kind of unexplainable bliss. When he goes home, he even posts about it on Twitter, and I'm telling you, the word goes around real fast. The next day, everyone, regardless of their opinion of Aoyama, shows up to the practice so they can somehow sniff Aoyama's towel. It's complete and utter chaos. Fortunately, our new club manager, Mokogoto wasn't taking any of it. She covers a baseball bat with nails and takes an offensive stance. But the number of students was simply too much. She didn't stand a chance. Aoyama proceeds to dodge all of them until finally Kaoru speaks up and tells everyone off. They all bail because no one wants to mess with someone as filthy rich as Kaoru. Although when Kaoru is alone in the club room, the curiosity was too much, he gives in after trying to protect the towel from falling onto the floor and takes a sniff. Kaoru's world is turned upside down. There was something intrinsically surreal about Aoyama's towel. It smelled of kindness, of pleasant memories, and nostalgia. Kaoru literally tears up as the towel makes him recall his early days. A few moments later, when Aoyama walks in, he witnesses Kaoru taking mad sniffs at the towel. Even in that moment, Kaoru tries to explain, but Aoyama keeps his distance and tells him to just burn the towel. Next up is Fujimi High School's first official game of the season. It's against the Kata Academy. Of course, they don't stand a chance against Aoyama, but their captain's girlfriend named Kana knows about Aoyama's cleaning habits. Right when he's cleaning every single ball and other stuff before the match, she asks him if he can help her with some cleaning. Ordinarily, if a pretty girl asks you to do some cleaning with her, you'll go for the girl and not the cleaning. But it was the opposite for Aoyama. He went with her to make the world a cleaner place for all of us, even you and me. But it was a trap. The place where she took them was the opponent's locker room. Once inside, she locks the room and traps Aoyama inside. It was time for the game, and so they had no choice but to start without him. But even the local dog knows that they don't stand a chance without Aoyama. Aoyama, on the other hand, tries to talk things out. That was the only way, because she was blocking the door, and if he wanted to push her aside, he'll have to, um, <clears throat> excuse my language, he'll have to touch her. But if that wasn't enough, she starts taking her clothes off so that even if someone accidentally opens the door, she'll look like the victim of assault. Very shrewd, Miss Kana. Very shrewd indeed. But Aoyama instantly collapses right there and then. Even in her weirdest dreams, she could never have predicted such a reaction from the guy. However, she was underestimating someone. No, I'm not talking about Aoyama. I'm talking about our sweet yet psychotic club manager. As it turns out, she was gradually checking every single room in the building until she found Aoyama. Finally, she opens this room and scares the living daylights out of Kana using her nailed bat. Now, even though he was rescued, he stays behind to first clean the locker room he was trapped in, and then goes to the pitch. He wastes an extra 15 minutes, but even so, he scores four goals all by himself and also assists Kaoru. They win with room to spare. Next up, we're introduced to yet another person who shares the exact same attitude when it comes to cleanliness as Aoyama. His name is Shion Narita. And while everyone knows about Aoyama-kun, he always tries extra hard to make sure no one is around when he's cleaning. He also takes pride in the fact that nobody knows about his ways. And while Aoyama and Narita have no idea, they both play the same RPG game where they touch, spill, and do everything else that they find themselves unable to do in real life. Anyways, this does get him into trouble one day when a female classmate's PE uniform is stolen. Naturally, since he's the quiet one, others suspect him to be the culprit. He runs while everyone tries to chase him. They think he's running because he's the one, but all he's doing is avoiding any physical contact with them. Fortunately, Aoyama shows up with the dirty uniform bag and tells everyone that Narita would never steal something like that. Honestly, I doubt anyone would. They all apologize to him, but more than that, he's genuinely surprised about how Aoyama already knew about his cleaning habits. Now, Fujimi High School's next game is right around the corner. This time, it's against Mina Mina Fuzoko High School. Alright, remember the guy who was the first one to take a big Big sniff at Aoyama's towel. Well, his name is Jin Tsukamoto. He's like the class clown, but believe it or not, he's a rare asset. He has the ability to juggle the ball using his butt for an infinite period of time. 
quite a talent. Also, his performance is crucial to the team's morale, but as it turns out, he knows the captain of Minamata Fuzoku High School. He was part of their team during middle school, but the captain and the others bullied him so brutally that he was left with no choice but to go to a different high school as them. Now he's up against his former teammates, and the PTSD is unreal. Poor guy can't even move properly during the game. The defense was useless, and by halftime, the opponents were in the lead. He goes and locks himself in the bathroom. He knows that he's dragging everyone down, and so he hopes they'll substitute him for someone else. Little did he know, Aoyama was cleaning the bathroom. He tells the guy it's no use dwelling on the past, since he's no longer the same person he used to be. Not just that, when the second half begins, Aoyama lets all of the opponents surround him and then creates an opportunity for Jin to score. Unexpectedly, the pass was rather rather weird, but Jin knew exactly what Aoyama intended for him to do. He has to score using his powerful butt. That was the intention behind the pass, pun intended. And so, he does just that. He scores a spectacular goal using his butt. In the end, Fujimi High School wins no problem, and Jin is once again as lively as ever. Now, since this is the protagonist school, you bet there are quite a lot of quirky students. One of them is Atsumu Ozaki, and he just so happens to be a manga artist. He's quite successful, in fact. His manga is even going to get an anime adaption. Other students at the school also read the manga, but because Ozaki always keeps to himself, nobody knows that he's the mangaka. This works out well for him, considering that he can observe everyone and get inspiration for his manga without attracting attention. Naturally, he decides to use Aoyama as an inspiration for a new character. He sneakily follows him around, but is not so pleased by how everyone treats him. Aoyama has an actual fan club. Pretty much all the girls have a thing for him. Even the guy can't help but be entranced by his aura. However, Aoyama never really engages with any of them and continues to keep his distance. This leads Ozaki to the conclusion that Aoyama's not a good guy, and so he bases his manga's antagonist on him. The character he comes up with is Wizard Sama, a ruthless maniac who will go to any length imaginable just to keep the world a clean place. He even has zombies and whatnot to help him clean. Of course, he's portrayed as the absolute evil, but as you can expect, Wizard Sama becomes more iconic than the protagonist. Everyone loves the character. It's a cultural phenomenon. Ozaki doesn't take kindly to the news because the protagonist is based after himself, and so he keeps making Wizard Sama more and more evil with each passing chapter. But it wasn't enough for him to win against Aoyama. Wizard Sama becomes the face of his manga. The merchandise sells at an insane rate. Everyone is talking about him. There are fan arts all over the internet. Social media cannot get enough of it. In fact, some smartass had the idea to make a Wizard Sama themed maid cafe, and he succeeded at life right away. Finally, Ozaki decides to turn Wizard Sama into a playboy, and just like that, his popularity plummets for the very first time. But even though Ozaki managed to keep the protagonist relevant, the production company tells him to bring back the old Wizard Sama right away. And so he tries every trick in the book to bring back the popularity, but since he wasn't basing it around Aoyama anymore, the audience was losing interest. Eventually, he stops being so persistent and brings back the good old Wizard Sama. Once again, this character owns the stage. Next up, we have basketball. Aoyama's pretty good at it. All he needs is to cover his hands with gloves so he can keep scoring as many points as he wants. Now, the only other student in the school who can compete with Aoyama when it comes to popularity is a girl on the basketball team. Her name is Mio Odagiri. Her personality is simple and straightforward, but she is absolutely gorgeous. She's also quite tall, but when she's on the basketball team, she somehow can't shoot in the basket at all. Even when an ordinary person may manage a fluke, she can't. She misses every single time, but at least she's eager to learn. She goes up to Aoyama and asks him for advice since he's really good at it, but all he ever tells her is the feeling of the ball. Miraculously, the next time they're playing, she does a beautiful jump and is about to dunk when it bounces off somewhere else. But Aoyama casually kicks it back in the basket and earns her the point. Mio's delighted. She thanks Aoyama for his advice and even pats him on the shoulder. Everybody freaks out since it's common knowledge not to touch Aoyama, but much to everyone's surprise, Aoyama can handle her touches no problem. In fact, he himself is also surprised probably more than anyone else. First, he asks another cute girl to shake his hand to see if he can handle her touch as well, but as always, he faints. Looks like Mio is the chosen one. And so this kickstarts a beautiful relationship between the two oddballs. From that day onward, Aoyama eagerly engages in physical contact with her. Arm wrestling, high fives, homemade lunches, you know, the normal stuff you do with a friend. But the school enters a state of complete frenzy because of this. Everyone thinks they're in a relationship, and so their motivation to always cheer for Aoyama somehow plummets. Later, he asks Mio to come watch his game, and whenever he does well, he engages in a high five with her. 
Mocha was observing everything, and while it was definitely hard for her, considering how she used to be his number one stalker, she knows that this is just what Ayama always wanted to do. And now there's a person with whom he can engage in physical contact with without fainting. Of course, when the misunderstanding about the relationship is lifted, everyone's cheers for Aoyama once again start roaring through the pitch. But the love troubles of Fujimi High haven't ended yet. The star player of the judo club named Tsubasa Umeya is incredible at what he does. He's a literal menace who can defeat anyone no problem. Though one day he just quits and joins the football team. Now, it's not because of Aoyama, rather it's because he has a crush on our manager. However, he has no idea that Mocha is already madly in love with Aoyama. In fact, she always wears a shirt that has I love Aoyama written on it. That's right, there are none so blind as those who will not see. Eventually, he realizes that the girl's heart is already somewhere else and decides to invite both Aoyama and Mocha to a zoo. The three of them then go to the zoo, but while Aoyama is looking at all those wonderful animals, Mocha's only looking at him, and Umeya is looking at her. We also have the other players on the team tailing the three of them. They think that Umeya is trying to somehow manipulate Mocha into a relationship with him, even though that's not what she wants. Little did they know, they severely underestimate the steel balls on this absolute Giga Chad. Even though Umeya loved Mocha all this time, he was simply trying to get her closer to Aoyama. While the sun gradually sets in the background, he watches from a distance as both Aoyama and Mocha take a boat ride in the lake together. The man had made his decision. Next up, it's revealed that their beautiful coach is actually a hardcore fan of a certain football anime. She even has the otaku pillows in, in the works. She realizes that the team in the anime will be going on a training camp and decides that they should do the same. Quite conveniently, they don't have to worry about the expenses at all since Kaoru's family secretly runs the world. Nah, I'm, I'm just kidding. They are filthy rich though, and the training camp takes place at a beach resort his family owns. Furthermore, since Mio and the other girls also accompany them, this is a certified beach episode. <laughs> the boys get distracted when the girls are in their swimsuits, but Mocha makes literal fools out of them by elegantly dribbling past all of them. Even Aoyama had to do more than necessary to snatch the ball from her. That's right, in his attempt, he accidentally touches her foot. Mocha's life is once again changed because of this event. Later, they all go to a nearby haunted building as a test of courage, but Aoyama can't help it. He cleans the place until it's no longer recognizable. After the training camp, as they go back to the usual practice, a beautiful girl from another school shows up and greets Aoyama. Her name is is Kozue Kurara, and from the looks of it, Aoyama already knows her. The other guys try to follow him after school to see where he goes, but they all end up outside of the house of Sego Ibuki, a renowned football player of the Spanish national team. When they go inside, they find Aoyama cooking dinner for this legendary player. As it turns out, Aoyama has been cooking dinner for him ever since he lost to Sego in a one-on-one -on -one match some time ago. But that's not all. Back when he was in the youth team, Sego was also his teammate. As for the girl who showed up at the practice, well, she's Sego's girlfriend. Of course, both Sego and Kozue are Ayama's friends. But as far as Sego and Kozue's relationship goes, things are somewhat unsteady. They do love each other, though. It's just that Sego thinks Kozue's cooking is boring. But little does he know that that's only because she makes sure that all of his nutritional needs are met. She's frustrated and angry at him because she can't understand such a simple fact, while Sego has the nerve to get her a beginner cooking book. Yikes. Even though she's always looking out for him, he can be quite dense. Fortunately, Aoyama helps them resolve this little lover's quarrel by making Sego realize Kozue's actual intentions. All in all, this was a genuinely sweet episode. Next up, there's a guy on the football team named Kazuma, who changes his hairstyle to look like Aoyama, and he miraculously also gets better at football. Not to mention, his popularity with the girls also increases. It makes no sense, but it works. Kaoru is frustrated because he lost his position as a forward to Kazuma. He goes and asks Mocha for help, and the cute manager decides to lend him a hand. But unfortunately, Kaoru is so bad at this game, he can't even score a goal. When there's no goalkeeper, Mocha doesn't know what to do with him. It should be theoretically impossible to be this bad at a game. Conveniently, Kaoru's father was nearby. He gives his son a thumbs up for working so hard, but also decides that he should give the coach a million yen to get his son back into the starting lineup. This gets on Mocha's nerves, and she ends up beating the living daylights out of both the father and the son. She trains Kaoru all night, and finally gets him to the point where he has a 50% chance of scoring on an empty goalpost. Meanwhile, whatever Kazuma had going after stealing Aoyama's hairstyle ends up wearing off and he's back to being the clown of the team. As for Aoyama himself, he seems to be getting scouted by a lot of powerhouse schools lately, which is to be expected considering his reputation, and this makes the other players somewhat anxious. Be that as it may, Kaoru tells Aoyama that it's okay for him to leave the school if he has better options. 
but Aoyama doesn't give him any sort of reply. This does trigger the question though, why does someone of his status go to such a mediocre school? I'm talking about both Aoyama and Kaoru. One used to be on the under-16 youth team, while the other has an almost disgustingly rich family. Anyway, their next game begins, and it's against the renowned Kuraishi High School. They're the best around when it comes to their iron wall defense. They come off hard from the get-go, the defense latches onto Aoyama, while their strikers continue to rack up goal after goal, and to make matters worse, Aoyama gets dirty while trying to protect a goal. In the end, only five minutes were left. At this rate, they were going to lose the game, but unexpectedly, Kaoru notices his mother cheering for him. This gives him the push he needed to lead his team to victory. Kaoru starts by scoring a goal, which disperses the defense, and also makes it easier for Aoyama to score a few more. They just barely managed to win. Looks like Kaoru's seen his mother for the first time in five years. She greets them, but instantly bails to Brazil on a helicopter after bidding her son farewell. That was it. Anyway, some scouts show up to try to recruit Aoyama, and once again, he declines. Seeing this, Kaoru and the others finally ask, what's the real reason? Why is he sticking to Fujimi High School? And well, as straightforward as it may seem, it's only because the color of their uniform is white. And a color that symbolizes cleanliness. And with that said, today's lesson on cleanliness is finally over. Make sure to do your homework, guys. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one.